Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on developing and using models, level two modeling phenomena. You can see since there is a whiteboard in the box that we're going to be doing some drawing. And creating models is one of the big things that scientists do. Models are simply representations of natural phenomena. And so we develop a model and then we can test and see if our model is right. And so whenever you're developing a model, you first of all want to identify what is the phenomena that I'm trying to explain. And then you, then you uh, develop a model. A model is going to have two big parts to it. It's going to have the components and the relationships. And then once we have a model, we're going to use that model to describe the model. But most importantly, we're going to use it to make some predictions. After watching this video, you should be able to develop models for phenomena like this oddly stable red block or how you can see your reflection in a mirror. I'm going to start by developing a model for this unstable red block and then you'll have a chance to develop a model for this uh, colored cube sort uh, box. And so let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so for this phenomena, what I have are two blocks. They are wooden blocks. You can hear them. They're about the same size. They have about the same shape. And when I put them on the table, they'll just sit there. However, when I put them on the table like this and just let it go, the red block is just unstable. And so when I let it go, no matter what I do, the red block is going to be unstable. And so let's write down what the phenomena is. So the phenomena is going to be this red block and the fact that it's unstable. Even though it looks like the green block, it's going to be unstable. And so the first thing you want to do is come up with some kind of an idea. A lot of the time with phenomena, you won't see anything on the outside. And so you have to kind of use your mind to figure out what might be going on. And so let's say, for example, I think that the reason the red block is falling is that there's some weight hidden up here. And so let me write down the important components that I think that are making it unstable. So you can see that I'm saying the most important things that I want to represent in my model are the green block, the red block, and then this weight that I think is hidden within the red block. Now it's hard for you to figure out exactly what am I thinking without me representing the model in a more visual way. So what I'm going to do is sketch out my model and in my model I'm going to draw both the green block and the red block. Okay, so now I've represented my, my model. Lots of times you spend too much time on a model and you don't get to the thinking. So it doesn't matter how it looks. I've drawn my green block, my red block, and now you can see where I'm putting the weight. I think the weight is up here in the red block. So now I have all my components represented on my model, but I don't show the relationships. How are they all related? So let me sketch that out. Okay, so on, uh, on my model now I'm trying to show the relationship between the weight and it being a big pole. So gravity is pulling down on it more than is pulling on the place that doesn't have the big weight. So now I have two parts of a model. I got the components, I've got the relationships. Next thing I have to do is I have to write a description. So that's a written description of my model. Okay, so the description that I have is that the weight in the short arm of the red block is pulled down more, making it unstable, so compared to the green block. And so you can see that my description is uh, explaining the phenomena, this unstable red block. Now, once you've got a description, the next thing you want to do is you want to say, okay, if my model is right, what prediction could I use my model to make? So let me write down a prediction. Okay, so the prediction that I've made is if you were to put both blocks in water, so if you were to put the red and the green block in water, my prediction is that the green block might float like this, but the red block is going to float like this with that small arm down, just because there's more weight. So again, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just making a prediction, but that prediction is based on my model. 
And that's one of the hallmarks of a good conceptual model. And so this is my model of an unstable red block. What I'm going to do is clean this up, and then I'm going to give you a different phenomena. And your goal is to figure that out and make a model of your own. Okay, so for the next example, what I'm going to do is just show you a simple phenomena. So I've got all these cubes over here. I've got green and yellow cubes. What I'm going to do is just put them in this little box. And I'm going to shake the box. And then when I dump it out, you can see that the yellow cubes are going to come out and the green cubes are going to stay in the box. And so that's the phenomena. So what I'd encourage you to do is to pause the video, identify the phenomena, and then create a model. Now, one of the hardest things about modeling is being wrong. A lot of the time you're going to be wrong. So I would just encourage you to just make a model. This is not about if you're right or wrong, but can you actually make a model? So again, pause the video, and then once you're done, unpause it, come back, and we'll see how our ideas uh, relate. Okay, so I'm going to take this and put it to the side. So the first thing I want to do is I want to identify what is the phenomena. Okay, so the phenomena I've identified is this yellow and green cube sort that they can get sorted in this box. Next thing that I want to write down is what I think are the most important components that I want to include in a model. Okay, from this you can see that I think some of the most important components that I want to represent would be a yellow cube, a green cube, and then the box. I also think there might be a magnet in the green cube and a magnet in the box. And so those are the big components that I want to show. Remember when you create a model, you don't have to include everything, just what, just what you think are the most important components. So now let me sketch out what I think is going on in this phenomenon. Okay, so now in my model, what I've shown is I've got the uh, components. So I've got the yellow cube, and it doesn't have a magnet in it. I've got the green cube, and it does have a magnet in it. And then I think in the box, there are magnets hidden in the bottom. So now I have all my components represented. Next thing I want to do is I want to draw the relationships. So you can see on here what I drew is that I think the magnet in the green cube is attracted to the magnet that's going to be in the box. Also over here I said between the yellow cube and the box there's no attraction. So when you're looking at relationships you're just trying to think through all these parts of the model, how are they all related to one another? Now the next thing that I need to do is now that I have my big parts of the model is I have to write a description for the model. Okay, so my description says that a magnet in the green cubes is attracted to hidden magnets in the box holding them in place. So the next thing I have to do and the last thing that I have to do is, if my model is right, I should make a prediction. Uh, what would happen if my model was correct? So let me write that. Okay, so my prediction is that if you were to add any magnet to the box, not just those that are found, I think, in the green cube, then it would be attracted to those magnets and it would stay in the box. So again, that's just my model. So now that I've showed you how and helped you create a model for the cube sort, I've got some other ones linked below. You can find some of the slides. You could try out the oddly stable um, red block, or you could even try to create a model of how you can see your reflection in a mirror. So this is modeling. You're just trying to figure out exactly what's going on in a phenomena, and then you're making some predictions so that we could test that phenomena, and I hope that's helpful.